Welcome to the next video um, in the basic firefighting series. In this video we're going to be discussing fire prevention. Now firefighting is a very important job but if you think about it pre fire prevention is even more crucial. I mean why fight something you can prevent in the first place? We always think about fire protection equipment and the use of firefighting tools but sometimes we, we sort of neglect the importance of practicing fire preventative measures to prevent an actual f accidental fire from happening. So before you learn how to fight a fire, um, let's have a look at how to prevent one. So let's go through some fire prevention tactics. The first of these is smoking. Smoking is one of the most common causes of fire outbreaks in, ho in homes, offices, and often in public areas. Discarded cigarettes that are not properly extinguished can easily reignite and result in a disastrous fire. Now, due to the hazards associated with smoking, um, as well as health considerations, it is advisable to have a designated smoking area with sufficient ashtrays, and this means that you basically set up a controlled environment when it comes to smokers and smoking. Next, we'll look at fire prevention in kitchens. Now, kitchens is one of the areas where a lot of fires start. And this is because cooking involves the use of flames, flammable materials, you know, such as your cooking oils. A lot of kitchens are gas powered. Because of this, it is necessary to always practice caution whenever you're inside the kitchen. The first thing is, Try to avoid wearing loose-fitting clothing, as this can catch fire easily. Aside from that, never leave cooking pots and pans unattended, even for a short while, if you need to leave the kitchen for whatever known reason. Make sure that you turn off the stove first, before you leave. The next topic in fire prevention is hazardous materials. Materials that can be considered as fire hazards include your flammable liquids, gases, paints, adhesives, and most types of chemicals. Because of this, it's necessary that you store these materials in safe places. In a workplace environment, there should be a specific area that's designated for the storage of flammable materials. And ideally, you should restrict access to it. So it should be a locked area and only responsible people should have the keys to the locks and access to the the storage facility. When it comes to electrical equipment, um, unsafe electrical conditions that can be fire hazards are numerous. They include damaged electrical conductors, overloaded sockets, overloaded extension cords, faulty wiring, uh, blown fuses, low quality electrical equipment, malfunction of electrical devices, loose electrical connections, and a lack of clearance between heating devices and combustible materials. So to avoid electrical fires, use any high quality electrical equipment and check your appliances regularly to see if there are any damaged parts or any damaged cords, plugs, that type of thing. Never overload electrical sockets or extension cords. And if you are gonna use electrical heating equipment, make sure that it's a good distance away, any, away from anything that can catch fire. The last topic that we're going to cover is rubbish. Now, it's one of those things that's often overlooked, but an accumulation of rubbish, especially in an industrial environment, can be extremely dangerous. Because what you've got is you've got a mixture of ordinary materials, flammable materials, oils, waste chemicals, and those are all just put into a pile together and there's a good chance that some of these things will react and you could have a fire that starts. So the best way to pre prevent fires when it comes to rubbish is that you should separate your rubbish into designated bins you know, for paper, plastic, organic, chemical, flammable and if you've got any hazardous materials they need to be disposed of often using a hazardous waste company and not just your municipal um, rubbish service. 
So after you become familiar with the, the common causes of fire, you can have a look at how, pre how to prevent them. And, you know, as I say, an ounce of prevention is better than a pound of cure. So make sure that you practice fire preventative measures and minimize the risks of accidental fires.